Welcome back. I'm the IntenseMD, a board-certified ICU doctor, here to give you an inside look about the intensive care unit. So if you've read the news lately, you know we are in our fourth wave of COVID-19 here in the United States. We are feeling it particularly heavy here in Texas. Since there have been a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, and a lot of misinformation and disinformation circulating the internet, I wanted to make some videos to clear some things up and just provide some more information. As I've mentioned in prior videos, I'm trying to avoid talking about COVID on my channel just because there is so much in the ICU to discuss. There are a lot of people on the internet talking about COVID, but I would feel like I'm doing a disservice to not speak out about some of the things that I've been seeing circulating and some of the things that my patients have been telling me. Again, this is to provide information. I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. This is not to give medical advice. This is for educational and informational purposes only. If you find this to be helpful or informational, please share just to circulate some good information out there. If you have any specific questions about COVID, the treatment of COVID, the vaccine that I don't answer in this video or any of the subsequent videos that I make this week, I have three total coming up. Please leave them in the comment section below. And if I get enough to make a Q&A video, I'll make a fourth video about COVID Q&A. But I really want to jump in and jump out of this topic so we can move on and talk about other things in critical care. So up front, I wanted to talk about the difference between misinformation and disinformation. These are some terms that you may have heard more recently. And the big difference between the two is the intention. Misinformation, someone might tell you something and they don't know that it's incorrect or they might know that it's partially correct, but they don't know that some parts of it are not fully correct. So it's more of an accidental spread of incorrect information. Disinformation is when people intentionally spread incorrect information. And with the internet, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, social media, things are spreading quicker than ever before and people are not having enough time to fact check. They just hit share and off the information goes. And the social media companies aren't really staying on top of fact checking information. So it just continues to circulate. So the first thing I urge you to do is if you hear anything that might sound not completely correct or just something that you want it to double check. See if the pa see if the person who gave the information lists sources. I'm going to list all of my resources down below and you're welcome to fact check anything that I say against the resources I have or any further information, but also make sure the sources they use are credible sources. You want to see things that are coming from medical journals, scientific studies, instead of a blog post or a TikTok. So for those of you who are new, I've talked about this in prior videos, but what are my credentials? I have a four-year bachelor's degree in chemistry. I have a four-year medical degree, doctor in medicine. After going to medical school, I did three years of internal medicine residency and I'm board certified in internal medicine as well as two years of critical care medicine fellowship and I am board certified in critical care medicine. And I have been working in a COVID ICU setting since March 2020, so I also have some anecdotal evidence as well, but I'm going to try to keep this very factual and not my opinion. I'll tell you if something is my experience versus what we've been seeing in studies, just so it's very clear what's facts, what's my own experience, and what are my opinions. But I try to keep my personal opinions completely out of my videos because, again, I just don't want anything to be misinterpreted or any accidental misinformation on my part. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about the Delta variant. And this is prior to the wave coming to the United States. I mentioned a couple things in that video in terms of why it's called Delta, the vaccine efficacy, what we knew about the Delta variant at that point, and what we are still questioning. So just some updates. As you know, I've said multiple times this is the fourth wave of Delta. There's a Twitter account that has been putting out the raw numbers from Texas every single day. And I just think it's interesting to go back and look at the beginning of July versus the end of July in Texas. And on July 1st, you can see there were 1,100 
new cases of COVID, about 1,500 people in the hospital. That is going down from the day before. 850 available ICU beds and a positivity rate of 4.8%. So that means of people tested, 4.8% of the tests have come back positive. Now looking at the end of the month, July 31st, there are 10,929 new cases. There are now 6,000 people in the hospital, and that's an increase of 400 from the day before. The positivity rate is now up to 17%. And on the day I'm editing this video, I looked at the new numbers and I decided to input them as well because as you can see, in just over a week, the new cases are now close to 17,000 daily. That's an increase of 6,000 from the prior week. The hospitalizations have jumped up to almost 9,000 people in the hospital, still increasing from the day before. The positivity rate is 19%, and as you can see, the number of available ICU beds in the state of Texas is dwindling. And I know this is just one state in the United States, but this is very similar to what is going on in other states, particularly in the South. So as you see, there's been a huge jump in numbers. What have I personally seen at my hospital about a week and a half ago, we just had a huge boom of new cases. And again, this is my personal experience. We went from almost no COVID patients in the ICU to our COVID ICU being full again and having patients needing to stay outside of the regular ICU into what we call ICU borders or ICU beds where they're being held in the emergency department or elsewhere in the hospital just because we don't have enough room for them in the intensive care unit. Something that I'm seeing personally is there are more younger people. There are people in their 30s and 40s versus prior waves. There's more so now than there were prior, at least in my experience. So we're going to talk a little bit about the vaccine here. And I just want to say prior to talking about this, I have no conflicts of interest. I do not own any of these companies. I don't even own stock shares in any of these country companies. I have not participated in any of the vaccine trials as an investigator or a participant. I have received the Pfizer vaccine. As you can see from my channel, I'm not monetized. I have a very low subscriber count and um, I'm not monetized in any way. So I do not have any conflicts of interest in terms of talking about this topic. So we've been asking the patients that we've received in the ICU because the majority of them are not vaccinated, why they didn't get the vaccine. And a lot of them are saying, I just didn't think I would get this sick. You know, I figured, People in my age group or people who are as healthy as I am are just getting minor symptoms, so why would I bother getting the vaccine? There are also some people who are worried about the side effects of the vaccine, and I will tell you I have not seen anybody hospitalized due to a side effect of COVID, but I've seen many, many people hospitalized due to COVID. Again, this is something that every individual needs to weigh their risks and benefits of receiving the vaccine and the potential side effects. There is a lot of information out there and continuing to gather more information about potential side effects. But as I said in my why did I get this vaccine video that I published a long time ago, um, the most common side effects are people just not feeling great after their second dose of the vaccine. This isn't to discount that there are some side effects that have been demonstrated, particularly with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But we're talking about risk versus benefit and the possibility of having a side effect from the vaccine versus having severe illness from COVID. And then, of course, there is the misinformation, disinformation, things like the vaccine changes the DNA, which is not true because the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA vaccines. This means that they are messenger RNA. Messenger RNA does not enter the cell, so it does not have contact with the nucleus of the cell, which is where the DNA lives. And there are plenty of resources online that go over basic cell biology that will further discuss the process of messenger RNA and how it is involved in cell replication. And then, of course, there's always the conspiracy theorists, people who just don't believe in the vaccine, people who don't want the vaccine for reasons of not wanting any vaccine, so, you know, there are always going to be 
people who do not want to get vaccinated for one reason or another. I think the thing that took us aback the most as healthcare workers is people saying, I didn't get vaccinated because I just didn't think it would be me getting this sick. Does the vaccine work? Yes, it does. And there are a few things that I wanted to talk about specifically with this in terms of misinformation and disinformation, because there are a lot of misconceptions about the vaccine. So the end point of the vaccine trial for Pfizer, particularly, and Moderna, we're looking at if somebody has severe COVID or somebody dies from COVID. So when somebody says the vaccine is effective, that means it is effective against people getting severe COVID and dying from COVID. It does not mean these patients will not get COVID that's asymptomatic. It doesn't mean that they won't get mild COVID. This is trying to protect people from death and severe COVID leading to lifelong long-term symptoms. Saying a vaccine has a 93% efficacy means that 93% of people who get the vaccine will not have severe COVID and will not have and will not die from COVID. That means that 7% may still get severe COVID. Have I seen people who have received the vaccine hospitalized with COVID? Yes, and particularly the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Do I know people who have been vaccinated who have had mild COVID? Yes, but they have not had severe COVID. The vast majority of patients we're seeing, particularly in the ICU at this point, have not received the vaccine. And that's a fact. People need to make a decision for themselves if they think that they want to risk getting severe COVID, being in the ICU, and dying from COVID versus taking the vaccine. Then there's the whole conundrum of why are we being asked to wear masks again? The CDC said a couple months ago that we can stop wearing masks and now they're telling us to wear them again. So a couple things about this. The CDC said people who are vaccinated can go without masks. That turned into everybody just stopped wearing masks, whether they were vaccinated or unvaccinated. Am I surprised by this? No, I think a lot of people were like, hey, wait a minute. There's no way of knowing who's vaccinated and who's not. People are just going to stop wearing masks. And the people who weren't getting vaccinated probably also aren't going to wear masks anyway. So people are taking this information, saying that we have to wear masks again, and twisting it into saying, well, that means the vaccine doesn't even work which again is not true. It just means that we have not reached herd immunity. This is the amount of people who need to get vaccinated in order for the disease, the virus, to stop spreading because most of the herd is vaccinated. There will always be people who cannot get vaccinated for one reason or another, but it's usually a very, very small percentage of the population. These are the reasons why they're asking people to continue to wear masks because you can still get COVID and spread COVID if you've been vaccinated. Nobody ever said that that's not the case. The reason is you're preventing the spread of COVID and you're preventing severe COVID. So there's a, a lot of people are starting to be like, well, just who cares? Like not, not enough people are going to get vaccinated. I'm sick of sitting home. I'm sick of wearing a mask. I got vaccinated. I did my part. Who cares if these unvaccinated people get COVID? Well, as long as COVID is still circulating, it still can mutate. We're seeing the Delta variant is causing more severe disease and is spreading quicker than the prior strains. So it can continue to mutate into another strain that is even more virulent, that spreads even quicker, that affects even more people. We might have a strain that might start giving people who've been vaccinated the severe virus. So we really want to squash this. And finally, people are asking if they need a booster. This is a hot topic. A lot of people in healthcare are talking about this in particular because most healthcare workers got vaccinated in December and January. And now we're starting to wonder, you know, now that we're past the six month mark, are we going to need to get a booster? And one of the infectious disease doctors that I follow on Instagram pointed out that the most important thing right now is trying to achieve herd immunity by more people getting vaccinated. The concern about us getting a booster shot is kind of secondary. They are still doing research. They are still collecting data. 
They're still following up on the initial study group from the vaccine trials prior to the FDA EUA. So Pfizer and Moderna will tell us when they start seeing immunity dwindle there and when they know that we need to get another shot. My opinion is we will probably need to get COVID vaccines every year, every couple years. I don't think this is something that is a one-time thing. Just like the flu shot, we get a flu shot every single year. So like I said in my prior video about Delta, I really don't want it to see like I'm shoving the vaccine down everyone's throat and making vaccine propaganda, but these are the facts, this is the truth, and this is what we're seeing. If you want to look at more resources, I have some below. If you have any questions about COVID, please leave them below and I'll answer them in a Q&A. Of course, if you want to spread disinformation, I'm going to delete your comments from this channel because we need to just stop, just stop. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and share it so more people can hear about what information is out there so far about COVID, the vaccine, the Delta variant. If you want to hear more critical care content, like I said, this is a little bit of a departure from what I usually do on my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be posting two more videos about COVID-related topics in the upcoming days, and then again, we're going to go right back into what we were doing prior to this.